Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to sum by month. And I'm going to show you how to do this by month name. So when we input a month name here in F2, so that could be an abbreviated month or non-abbreviated, it will still do the calculation. Now, the first method I'm going to show you will work in Excel 365. And the second method I'll demonstrate will work in any version. Now the first step is to use the date value function and this will convert the text string here to a date. So here's my date text. I actually need to concatenate or join that with the number one and that will return a date. Now it doesn't look like a date because it's a number but if I show it as a date you can see it's returned a date where the month is this month. If I change February to March you can see the month changes. Now we're not interested in the day or the year, that's irrelevant to us. What we want to do is extract the month part of that date. So I'm going to put it in the month function and then I get my month number, the number three. If I change this back to February, I get number two. So what I need to do is now run a test to see which of these dates have the same month number. Now, these dates here are in UK format. So for our US counterparts, this is day, month, and year. Now, this method will work whatever format your dates are in. So don't worry about that. So I need to run a test extracting the month part of these dates. So equals month open bracket select the first date, select down to the last one, back to my formula, close the bracket, and I need to say, are those month numbers equal to the month number I've extracted from this text string? Now, you can see it spills the results into surrounding cells, and I've got my trues here, which correspond to the February dates in this list in column A. So this now becomes the test that I'm going to use within the filter function. So filter at the beginning of my formula and the array, well, that's going to be the numbers we want to add up. So in my example, it's quantity, comma, and include, well, that's the test that we've devised here. So then I can just close the bracket at the end and press enter. And what that's going to do is return all the numbers for the February dates. So if you have a look down here, you see it starts with a 283, etc. 283 down here. So then I just need to sum up those numbers. The whole thing in the sum function. So we get 40 as our answer. So that method works if you're in Excel 365. You're not going to have the filter function in previous versions of Excel. So instead, we can use something very similar, but with the sum product function. This test that we've devised here, we're going to use within this next formula. So what I'm going to do, rather than just writing it all out again, I'll just copy, copy that test, and I'm going to paste it in here. Now, if you're not in Excel 365, you won't see this spill effect but don't worry, the formula is still working behind the scenes. And in fact, what you can do in previous versions of Excel to see the same thing is select your formula and then press the F9 key at the top of the keyboard to see those true and false results. But you must control Z to get back to your formula if you're going to do that. Now, what I need to do in this version of the formula is convert these trues and falses to ones and zeros. The trues need to become ones, essentially. Now, to do that, we can just do some sort of numeric calculation on the trues and falses. So I'll just say zero plus, and I need to put this formula in another set of brackets. And then I'm getting ones and zeros rather than trues and falses. So then what we can do is put this within some product. And the array one is going to be these ones and zeros. And array two is going to be these quantities. And if I press enter, you can see it gives me exactly the same result. Now, if you're interested to know exactly how this works, let me just try and explain the formula to you. Now, we know 
that this returns ones and zeros. You can see that actually in the screen tip. Again, that only appears in Excel 365. So you've got to remember with some product, what it's doing is summing up the product of these arrays, where I have a one in this array, it will multiply the corresponding number in this array and then add up those values. So two ways of doing exactly the same thing. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.